Hello pen lovers and stationery enthusiasts, it's Christy here, Snarky Wordsworth over on Instagram and Reddit, and today I have another bespoke pen unboxing for everybody. Um, this is from a company that I'd been looking at for quite a few months now. I had read about the pen maker, read about the reasons why he named pens a certain way, and I knew that I was definitely very interested in checking out the individual designs. And then earlier this year, a pen maker that I really enjoyed working with suggested that I check out the company, not knowing that it was already on my radar. And so I just kind of took that as a sign. Uh, I spoke with the pen maker, had a great experience going back and forth about potential materials, and the result has arrived. And I am so, so excited. So let's just get on with the show and go ahead and unbox this lovely new addition to my collection. Holy smokes. Okay. Can you see this? One, how cool is this packaging? It's very, very cool. I've not seen anything quite like this before, and I really like it. Also, like, I can definitely, like, just have it on my desk. Obviously, this is terrible because you can't see it, but <laughs> I like that I can 100% just pop it on my desk like that and not worry about it. Like, I love that. Okay, so. This is the Vanyar model from Mayfair Pens. Uh, just look at this. Look at this blank. So, uh, the pen company owner and maker is named Ben. He was delightful to work with. He went back and forth with me and gave me lots of options. I had told him I was really interested in something a little bit more neutral tone because that's generally the color scheme that I prefer. And I had seen something on the Stormwinds blank site that I had not seen used anywhere called Caribbean Calcite. So, I'd asked him his opinion and he was super upfront and honest. He'd said he had not actively worked with that particular blank in the past, but he thought it might make a really nice pen. And I, when I suggested this particular blank for the uh, center of the body, he thought that that might work as well. And I think it absolutely turned out perfectly. This is exactly what I was looking for. Little hints of sparkle, nothing too crazy, but really the star of the show is that gorgeous blend of neutral tones. You've got some mint in there, some beautiful creams, some really pale beiges, and then some sort of cafe crema looking bits. It's just so cool. And then the same can be said for down below. And I just think this is so gorgeous. Now, Ben's company uh, uses different words from Tolkien uh, literature and uses those words for his pens. And as a lifelong Tolkien fan, that really appealed to me. And then when I saw this body, I thought, this is such a cool and unusual shape. I don't see a ton of pens that look like the pens that he sells. And I think that's really amazing that you know, he's managed to make these beautiful pieces of art that are very much unique to him. So when I see them on Instagram or on YouTube, I know they are his pens. Uh, now, I just opted to go with a fine stainless steel nib. Just keep it super minimal, super simple, kind of in keeping with the whole neutral tone of the pen itself. Uh, but I think it works so, so well. Look, just seriously, I cannot get over this blank and how much I love it. Like just those little tiny hints of transparency all in the swirl of these really beautiful neutral tones. It's just gorgeous. This is such a good blank and I've never seen anyone use it before. Um, so just FYI, Caribbean Calcite is absolutely a winner. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab some specs for you and just a little bit more information. And when I get back, we'll do a writing sample, a size comparison and go from there. Okay, so I know that I said I was going to be right back at the end of that unboxing, but it's actually been about three weeks that I've gotten to spend with this Mayfair Pens Vanier model. And I'm really, really glad that I stopped and took the extra time because now I really have a great feel for everything that this pen is able to do more so than when I just do my initial like 15 minute uh, instant review. So 
this thing is a really, really great writer. Uh, I have all of the specs that I was able to gather uh, capped. My uh, Vanyar runs 147 millimeters. Uncapped, it runs 136 millimeters, and this is a pen that cannot be posted. So you can see, not possible. <laughs> uh, but unposted, it is super duper comfortable. You can see, um, I do have smaller hands, but I definitely think that this is a pen that would work well, even if you have much larger hands. Uh, very well balanced, even without being able to post anything. It's very comfortable. Uh, the grip is a really good size for me. I don't have calipers, and I know I should buy some just so that I'm able to give you an accurate measurement. I tried doing the whole thread and mathematics thing, and every time I got something a little bit different because my thread measurements are always a little bit off. Uh, so I can't give you exact specs for the grip size but it does feel very similar to the Esterbrook. Now here is one caveat because you do have a pretty good sized squeeze point. If you are not used to that, it, get, it does take a little bit of time. And I will say the first couple of days of using this, it did, you know, take me aback a little bit just because I was not used to that much of a squeeze. Now I will say at no point did my fingers ever extend to hit like the edges and let me show you up close. There is a bit of a, I don't know that you'd call it a step up top, but that does exist and your threads are at this very upper part. I don't choke up on my pens. Now if you're someone who does, like if you find your hands creeping up, that might be an issue for you. But because you've got this sort of squeeze, I don't know that you would have that tendency on this pen. There's nowhere really to slope. You should be sort of stopped. Um, that said, since I am not someone who squeezes up, I can't guarantee that. But just something to keep in mind. Uh, as someone who has a pretty standard grip, this is very, very comfortable. Uh, again, I, it took me a little bit of time, like a couple of days just to get used to it, but I actually really love it now. And it's very, very comfortable in the hand. I've written a couple of long letters with it. So I know it really holds up on long writing sessions rather than just short. Uh, so that is definitely a plus. Now, um, when you want to ink it up, this bottom part also unscrews and you can disassemble very, very easily. Um, and I'm not going to at the moment just because it's already filled with ink and I don't want to have another spill like I did in the last video. Uh, but it is super easy to disassemble and very, very easy to clean. I really appreciate that, obviously, especially with a pen that you can see. Uh, this was my fault. I definitely was not being careful. And so I have a little extra ink there, but cleans up really, really easily, as I mentioned. and is easy to reassemble. Now weight, when this guy has a full cartridge is about 24 grams, uh, and it feels very, very comfortable as far as how heavy it is. It does not feel like super duper light, because I personally don't enjoy pens that are crazy light. Uh, so this one is a really good uh, feel in the hand. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention is how this thing writes. This is such a great, great writer. I just opted for a really simple, fine nib. Uh, but when I picked it up and started writing, I noticed it was really smooth, like very, very comfortable. It just sort of glided across the page. And I was really happy about that. I did talk to Ben. He was very adamant. He does not consider himself an expert about nibs, but he does tune everyone that leaves his shop, which I think is pretty awesome. A very nice extra service. Uh, so you know, that's just one of those little extras that I really did love about uh, working with Mayfair. Okay, so when I first got this, I really wasn't sure what ink I wanted to use in it. I hadn't had any prior thoughts rather than just being really excited for this pen. Uh, and once I got it and looked at it and really got to see everything going on in this Caribbean calcite, I was even more at a loss because there's a lot going in, going on in this particular resin. It's got these gorgeous sort of beiges and tans and sort of latte colors, but then you've also got mints and green grays and just slate gray. There's just a lot going on. And what kind of ink is really going to go well with it? Because I am somebody who likes to sort of at least vaguely match my pens to my inks. 
So I just, you know, went through and picked six random, not random, but six inks that I really, really enjoy that sort of lean into that neutral zone. And some of them were better matches than others. Uh, this one is purely like a brown toned ink, but I do think if I want to lean in that direction, Ferris Wheel Press's Oyster Hour would be a fantastic fit for the brown shades in here. It really is a lovely, lovely color, and I do think it's a nice flowy ink. Um, I'm going to come back to the Birmingham Pen Company shades uh, and just skip right to Sailor Yurimeku's Kitsune Biore. This one definitely leans a little more pink than I would like, so maybe not the best fit, but an absolutely gorgeous shade of sort of brown tone. Um, Troublemaker Kelp Tea, gorgeous chromo shader, but not a good fit. Definitely leans pink, uh, but there are some really nice green tones in it, so that's what I was thinking maybe would work. And then Lages and Pastelier's Ancle Classique in Olive. I do think if I just want to lean into the grays and the greens, this one is a really good option. Um, for whatever reason, it's showing up a little greener the, in the video than it does in real life, but it, it does match the pen quite well. So going back to the Birmingham Pen Company inks that I picked, these are both uh, Birmingham chromo shaders. I will say in my limited experience, Birmingham's chromo shaders are significantly wetter than a lot of other chromo shading inks, and I love that about them, so I wasn't really nervous about using them in a fine nib. Now, Plowman's Pebble is a gorgeous color. I fell in love with the second I swatched it, but I think it leans a little darker than I wanted it to. Um, just it plays a little more into the browns than I was hoping rather than the greens. But Birmingham Pen Company's Salt Marsh, on the other hand, when you look at this lettering, and let me just zoom in really quickly. So now that we've zoomed in, you can see, look at how that goes from gray to green to sort of brownish green. It is such a good match. Now the swatch does not tell me that at all. <laughs> So I was quite surprised by the difference here, but I love the way this one is writing and I've been using it a lot in journal entries in addition to letters and I, it just it's just so pleasing to the eye and while I'm writing with it especially I'm just always delighted by the color match. Uh, so I did end up going with Birmingham Pen Company's Salt March. I think this, this is a fantastic, fantastic duo. Okay, on with the writing sample. Okay, so you can see how that fine line looks across the page. It really is a pretty standard fine line. It just happens to be very, very smooth and very well tuned. Uh, I'm ridiculously happy with this nib. Uh, to be honest, I just, I just really, really am. And if you want a bit of a longer writing sample, I do have a transcription example. So hold on one moment. Okay, so this is my slightly longer writing sample. You can see how uh, it really does just put a beautiful line of ink on the page. I loved writing with this. Uh, this is obviously just a couple of pages, so it's not what I would consider a long writing session by any means, but for this length, it was super duper smooth and I was super duper happy with the output as well. Uh, at no point was I getting any kind of uh, hard starts or anything like that. It was just, just smooth sailing all the way. Uh, you can also see how gorgeous this ink is. I am so obsessed. It's not even funny. This salt marsh is something else. I love, love, love the shading on that. That's just nuts to me. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm so, so, so happy with the performance of this pen really, truly. Uh, and, and it's just such an interesting shape. You know, I don't have any pens like this in my collection. This is the only one that has this very cool sort of, uh, almost ergonomic, I want to say design to it. Uh, whereas it still looks so cool. I mean, I don't have anything like this at all. And it makes me really, really happy that I do have it in my collection. 
Okay, let's get to a quick size comparison and then we will get to some final thoughts. Okay, and here we are with a size comparison between my most frequently used fountain pens. On the larger size, I have Just Turning's Deluxe Model alongside the Banu Euphoria and the Walltown Prep Pens Onslow. These are all right around the same size and it looks like my Vanyar from Mayfair is right about the same size as well. So it's interesting to see how I am starting to sort of gravitate towards pens of this size, more so than the pocket pens, though I still use the pocket pens a lot. Um, and right next to the Mayfair Vanyar is the Estherbrook SD, which is still one of my favorite sizes of pens of all time. I just find the Estherbrook SD to be so comfortable in the hand. Uh, my Vanishing Point from Pilot. Then there's my lovely, lovely Virgo from Zodiac Pens. I love this thing. This thing is super duper comfortable to write with, like crazy comfortable. Um, I use this all the time. Here is a Pro Gear, uh, a Twisby Diamond Mini, and then a Caveco Sport. So you can see when closed, I am starting to look like I gravitate towards slightly larger pens, which are still not even that large. I have plenty of friends who have huge pens <laughs> compared to these, and uh, they think that my my opinion as far as like large pens is laughable. But for someone who gravitated for years around this area, this is a big, big shift. Uh, but these are all very comfortable, and this Mayfair is especially so uh, right now. So let me wait. Let me go ahead and uncap them uh, and show you how I write with them, whether it be posted or unposted, and then we can look at the size that way as well. Okay, once we've uncapped and either left them uncapped or posted these pens, we're in a very different landscape, as you can see. Uh, some of my very smallest pens become the equal or larger than some of my largest pens, and then some of my largest pens become pretty average in size. And then my absolute favorite, this Estherbrook SD, is the smallest one, actually, when we look at lengthwise, and it fits my hand the best. I, I guess I just would not have expected that had I not started looking at <laughs> size comparisons this way. Uh, but you can see the Mayfair definitely is right in line with the Banu Euphoria and the Just Turnings Deluxe. Uh, it is also quite, quite close in size to the Zodiac Virgo. And surprisingly, the Caveco Sport. The Caveco Sport does run with a uh, five, a number five nib though, or around a five, I think, I believe. So that is a very different writing experience, I will say, but lengthwise, quite comparable. Uh, but yeah, so this is how it happens to fall with my collection. Obviously, collections will vary, but hopefully it gives you a basic idea of what uh, may be in comparison in your own collection. Okay, so that about wraps it up for my Mayfair Pens Vanyar review. I, on the whole, am really, really enjoying writing with this. Uh, if you happen to have any questions, if you have any comments, if you are looking at picking up a pen like this or one of his other designs, which are also absolutely stunning, uh, definitely, definitely drop a comment and let me know. Uh, I also would love to know how you feel about some of the other designs because I'm very curious about several of them, uh, including like the pocket pen version of this. It, he does this really, really awesome pocket version that I just think is adorable. It's an eyedropper and it's just super cool and tiny and cute and just kind of perfect. And I definitely have that on my wish list now. Uh, but yeah, so don't be afraid to ask questions or share information. Definitely looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, if this video happens to be interesting, entertaining, useful, whatever, please do consider giving it a thumbs up, potentially even subscribing to the channel. Uh, and as always, thank you so much for joining me. If you've made it to the end of this very long-winded video, I appreciate the fact that you have. You are absolutely everything that is awesome. Uh, and with that, one more time, thank you so much for joining me, and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye!